The Heisman, it's a big trophy. Our other house, we, we had it on our mantle, and the kids used to, I mean, they were real little, so they kind of rode it like a hobby horse. <laughs> we have pictures of them sitting on the thing, you know, and uh, so, yeah, we didn't know what to do with it. Football would have to wait for Roger Staubach. Though he was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys in 1964, the Navy graduate first had to fulfill four years of military service. It is Ensign Roger Staubach now, and he's quarterbacking a team of local workers at a Navy supply depot in Da Nang. Do you miss the old days? I miss, I miss football a great deal. Yes, I do. But I, I do enjoy the Navy, and I uh, have a big job over here, and I'm going to do that, and uh, that's the most important thing right now. Wherever he was, I used to have to send him boxes of footballs. I don't know how they could wear out so many. And I asked him, where are all these balls going? And he said, well, we had a, a, a bunch stored in this tent about 100 yards from where we were staying, and a mortar shell hit it and blew up all the balls. Instead of spending his military leave relaxing at home, Staubach dodged linemen at Cowboys training camp. He was like secretariat against a bunch of plow horses. Uh, is what he was. He had unbelievable quickness. He had unbelievable change of direction. That's what made Roger great. He would feel you coming and he would just spin out. Like he had eyes in the back of his head. Taking that leave to go to that train camp was the best two weeks leave I ever took. That's when I really knew I could play football again. Just turned 27. I, I hope as a quarterback I can stay, uh, stay around longer. I might be in for a rude awakening. At Navy, the freewheeling Staubach was encouraged to improvise. In Dallas, there was a system, a system under the total control of head coach Tom Landry. Tom was an engineer. He had such belief in the system that he had meticulously devised that he kind of resented the human players getting in the way of it and screwing it up. You better be ready, I tell you, when you go through there, because he's going to come. He, he was a tough guy and kind of no-nonsense. Uh, you know, I was afraid of him, really. Coach Landry was pretty cautious with quarterbacks, and he didn't like to throw them out without a couple of years' experience. I look over every once in a while, see, see that he's not getting too close. But the way I look at it, though, it's my job until he takes it away, because I've been there before, and he hasn't. The player that, that was involved was Craig Morton, and he was a first-round draft pick and a very talented player. He took us to a Super Bowl. They say the Cowboys cannot win the big one. Dallas should have been well ahead. I didn't have anything against Craig. Mine was an age issue. After we lost to Baltimore, uh, I told Coach Landry that I'm 29 years old, and if I don't get a chance to play, I want to be traded. The next season, in 1971, Landry still hadn't made up his mind. The quarterbacks, their names are Morton and Staubach, and there seems to be some question as to which one will start. We both were playing really well, so Coach Landry announces that we're going to alternate. And we kind of looked at each other and said, man, some coach just had a, he had a stroke or something? What's going, on? <laughs> What's going on here? We're going to go with this two-quarterback system, mainly because they're both executing very well. Craziest thing he ever did. Soldier Field in Chicago. I was alternating plays at tight end with Pettis Norman, and all of a sudden now the quarterbacks were alternating plays. We get the play, you know, I run out the field, Craig's run off the field. It's like two ships passing the night. And then at the end of the game, coach kept Craig in in the final two-minute period, and I thought I was toast. I mean, I thought my career with the Cowboys was over. Coach Landry, he called me at about 10.30. He said, uh, Craig, can you come over? And I said, sure. He sat me down. He says, Craig, he says, uh, thanks for coming over. He says, I got a feeling. I said, OK. He says, I'm going to go with Roger. Thanks for coming over. And that was it. He had a feeling. The old school coach cast his lot with the unpredictable quarterback, the escape artist, Roger the Dodger. On third downs, I used to stand next to Coach Landry because I held for extra points and field goals. And Roger would drop back, and he'd start to run, and Coach Landry would go, no, no, Roger, no. And then he'd go, 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 Roger. I 
not fit his ideal of a perfect quarterback because I did run quite a bit, but he also saw that I would figure out how to win. Starback looks like he might take off. Got away from one. Got away twice. Roger, you are something else. Behind Staubach, the Cowboys reeled off nine straight wins and rolled into the Super Bowl. The man deemed to have been the most valuable player in today's game, Roger Staubach. And what a story that is. Staubach became the first player to win both the Heisman Trophy and Super Bowl MVP. Like he did with the Heisman, Staubach proved his decisions were not being shaped by football, but by family. After the Super Bowl for the MVP, instead of getting a Dodge Charger, I asked him for a station wagon. Old Staubach, he must be a lot of fun. Well, yeah, we had three, we had three kids, and we had and it had two more, so I didn't need a Dodge Charger. What are you going to do tonight? Well, my my wife and family and her family's here. We're just going to, uh, you know, relax, talk about it, and go to a team team function. And uh, I'm just thankful we had a successful football season. Coming up, I could not believe I'm in the same locker room with Roger Staubach. I was in total awe of him. I just watched him how he put on his socks, his jock, everything, man. Well, not his jock, sorry, Roger. 